your pro debut was Sarah Flores. That was that yes. was the fight. Mm -hmm. And um, just try to take your mind back. What was that like? Because I know you had a lot of fights before, prior to that. But your first pro, your debut, what was the feeling in that? I had, that was one of my favorite fights ever. It's going to go down in my in the history of just being like my homecoming. Like when you fight and you go, when I was on a national team and on Team USA, you fight all around the world. You don't get to fight at home. And literally, you guys, when I fought at home, my people showed up. I literally mm -hmm. probably had like two, three hundred people in the building screaming for me, <laughs> cheering for me. I came out to Webby. I got my people with me. <laughs> they went crazy. Uh, that was literally like one of my favorite memories in boxing for myself. Like that was special. Like shout out to all my people because they was literally in the building with me. And okay. it, that was just like special. I love that moment in my boxing career. Okay, speaking of the music, how important is your intro music? How important um, is that? It's very important. It usually tells your story on okay. like how you were feeling for that camp and or whatever. My nephew was like right here. You guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, all right. So all right. Like, uh, I, yeah. How hard is it to pick a song though? It's really hard. That's like more hard than damn fight. <laughs> <laughs> for real, like it's like. I've come, I've come out to, uh, I came out to Webby. I got my people with me. I came out to Ace Hood, Undefeated. Mm -hmm. um, I came out to Beyonce, um, Information. I came out with all of my girls. Uh, and then sometimes I'm in fight you guys, and I don't know what the hell they play. I'll be like, what is this song? You be like, saying a song, and they just play something, and you be like, whatever. What is this? But anyway, <laughs> those are the more memorable songs that I have. But usually your song is important because what, you, what I'll be doing is I'll be training to the song. And then it's yeah. like, if it evoked those type of emotions in me, I'll be like, okay, yeah, this is the one. Like, if it makes me feel some kind of way, and I'll be kind of like, okay, I'm in my zone, then that's usually. So I came out to Nipsey Hussle, grinding all my life. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. Right. Um, that, was really, oh. that was really dope. Yep. Rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. So I came out to Nipsey Hussle too. But the song is important. It usually tells the story of that camp or probably how you're feeling at the time. Okay. Okay. All right. So you get out there, get in the ring, history is made, fight is over. Like, <laughs> there it goes. Now, what's the feeling mm -hmm. like? Like, you got that. You sore no. as hell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you would uh, be sore out of your mind, y'all. You'd be happy it's over because boxing is not just a really physical sport, it's a really emotionally taxing sport. You know how boxing gotta be some real special people because a lot of people never had a fight in their life. Now when you choose to fight for a living. It's like you literally constantly make your emotions go like here, here, here all mm -hmm. the time. So it's hard to focus on other things because somebody yeah. literally training to knock you out. You training to knock somebody out. So you be mentally relieved for a minute because you know you be like, yeah, get the like shit. <laughs> uh, go on vacation. You be yeah, uh, finally relief. <laughs> yeah, and all your hard work paid off. All of the mental preparation because you a lot, a lot goes into preparing for a fight. So you be just really relieved and. Lord knows you can't try to like eat too much food at one time. People be thinking like you could just like eat all of this food, but really you just make your body go into craps if you do it because you've been like ate healthy for mm. so long and you've been lost weight and all this. And then you think you can just like smash some food. Nah, you be curled up like a baby. Like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just be relieved. Okay. So after the win, after the fight, what is your victory meal? What is your your meal? Do you still stick to your diet or do you? Really? You... It depends. But like, you mean like that night? I'm just or saying in general. Yeah, in general. what do you do? What's the celebration meal like? What is... Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you guys, you'd be extremely exhausted. You'd be super tired, right? Because you fight. And all your people there, then you gotta shake a million hands. Thank you, yeah. thank you. I love you guys. Love you, love, love, and do a million interviews. So you'd be tired. And I like cupcakes. So all I just wanna do is eat some cupcakes. Cupcakes. I, I just want some cupcakes. cupcakes. Like, I know that sound like what, but for real, I just want cupcakes. Hey, it is what it is. What kind of cupcakes? What's what's the flavors? What's the what's the um one? I am hold on you guys. Can you hear me still? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. So my favorite cupcakes is 
I'm like a cupcake snob. I like <laughs> high end cupcakes. Okay. <laughs> so I be wanting to do like, you know, the caramel apple and, and oh, you fancy. Know, banana cream. <laughs> I'm a cupcake snob, you guys. So, you know, any type of like high end cupcake, I'm going to eat that. Okay. Okay. Cupcakes after a fight. Never would have thought. Yes. <laughs> Cupcakes after a fight. No, not at all. Um, was there ever a time you got in the ring and mid fight you'd be like, oh, "This this person might actually beat me." Hell nah. Now uh -oh. I will say this. no because you know, like people say, like you'll never get scared. No, I'm not gonna sit up here and not keep it a hundred. What will happen is you'll. Because you already be like, no matter what happened, you ready to, if you know, you ready yeah. to die on your shorts, your sword. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever, yeah. you ain't beating me. You ain't put in the work. You ain't dieted like me. You ain't put in the work like me. But some stuff will make you be thinking, why the hell did I pick boxing? <laughs> Y'all got head butted one time. Lord knows my forehead big enough. I swear to God, I was like, Lord God, if this girl can punch that hard, I'm in trouble. Shit. <laughs> 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 it really was a head, but but in the amateurs you don't experience that because you got the headgear. You got on. the head, yeah, you yeah, head yeah. Pros, you ain't got no headgear, and to me, that's the worst thing ever. Head butt is is the worst thing ever, and that made me be like, God damn, like Lord, great yeah. hell, come on, your head big enough. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's like, how do you train for a head butt, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't, and you don't really even know how to process it until it happens but you mm -hmm. literally kind of like blank for a minute and you'd yeah. be thinking like god damn was that a punch but a punch don't feel like a headbutt now mm -hmm. not to say like a punch don't hurt because a punch do hurt but nothing is like a headbutt that's the only thing that ever made me be like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 okay like i'm sad what I happened y'all already know right now i get one of them ugly cuts cut <laughs> done, done. <laughs> You'll still be pretty. Um, what is a normal training day for you? You said, what is a, a regular training day for me? Yeah. yeah. So in camp is different from when you're out of season. So pretty much um, the difference is the intensity changes because you okay. want to leave something in the tank to kind of really kind of gear up and go on overdrive when you're in camp. But pretty much a regular day for me looks like Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I usually do um, strength and condition in the morning and that's usually like calisthenics and the tire um, swings and push-ups pull-ups stuff like that I usually do it for about maybe an hour maybe an hour and a half you rest and then um, I sometimes I'll do like film study um, and then that afternoon I'll do my boxing training and my boxing training is probably like two hours three hours usually max and if I'm not in campus, um, strategic training where we're training for certain punches and, and we're tactically training. If we're in camp, we're kicking up and it's time to go get it. Okay. Um, all right. And the nice. weekends I hike, stuff like that. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get my boxing training on. So, you know, I have that. <laughs> I see you, I see you. <laughs> um, we had the pleasure of speaking to a few fighters in our time, and uh, something that reoccurs, a lot of them say, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I can yeah. hear you. Sorry, y'all. Yeah. My phone is always dead. Don't judge me. It's all right. I don't ever answer my phone, <laughs> y'all. It's always ringing, <laughs> and it's always dead. I don't know why. What? Anyway, sorry. Go yeah, better okay. one day. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of fighters always say when they go into a fight, they're never 100% because of how they train. Do you feel that way? Do you ever feel like you go into a fight and you're not 100% at your... Yes. <laughs> you Like, you guys, really, boxing is really just a really taxing, trying sport. And the reason being is because sometimes being in camp, you ain't got injured, right? Mm -hmm. But you still got to mm -hmm. fight through it. So you go into camp and, and you go into the fight, you're like, God damn, I broke my finger, but I can't really, you can't pull out the fight now. You're going to be ducking yeah. and scared. So... You have a lot of issues where you'll have an injury before a fight and you just trying to mask it and go in there and just, you know, God, help me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you've seen all the work I did. Help me, God. And then sometimes you have an unforeseen thing. Okay, prime example with me. I got a contract to fight you, right? You guys, I got a contract. I like to travel. No disclaimer. So I always fight and then try to go on vacation, right? So mm -hmm. I had a fight scheduled for January, say, 30th. I scheduled, I bought me a ticket to go to Thailand for my birthday, which is February 15th right? 
they can't they canceled the fight on January 30th, moved the fight to November, I mean to February 20 20th. No, no, 28th or something, right? I'm about to not go to Thailand. <laughs> I spent like two thousand dollars. Like money I didn't spent to go to Thailand, you guys. So I'm like, damn. I, 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 you know, I got to fight. So now I'm on, now I'm in Thailand, but I don't really get to enjoy vacation because, you know, I'm shadow boxing. I'm running on these little ass streets and these cars is coming by. That ain't even the killer, right? Cause I'm still training. I get food poisoning. Oh man. <laughs> so I get food poisoning in Thailand and then I had to come back and I had to fight, but she still got to fight. So you still got to fight through it. That's still got to fight. But that was crazy, you guys. So I got food poisoning. And it was crazy. I was in Thailand, and then I had to turn around, and then I had to come, and I had to fight. So, yeah, that was really hard. But I, I want to know what you ate, because now I'm scared. <laughs> I was being fat, y'all. So, I really had no business eating. I so, this is what cake. happened. I got all of these. these I'd be going to read on these little blogs on what to do, what not to do. And it said, don't eat no street food, right? But mm-hmm. I don't eat meat. Um, like, I'm slowly um, moving out of um, eating seafood, too. But, okay. man, y'all, they had this ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really good. And I was like, it's just ice cream. I can eat this ice cream. Negative. Ate some rolled ice cream, like, in the streets. You know how they, like, <laughs> roll? I don't know. And then I don't know. I was having a slow moment because in my mind, I was like, well, it's cold. It's going to, like, kill the germs. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, just, I was that, thinking. That proves, short, did me in some ice cream. That proves oh, you man. are fearless because I don't think I would dare eat street ice cream from another country or this country for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally ate some ice cream, y'all. It was the worst thing ever. Yeah, I live to tell a story, but goddamn, don't go to Thailand eating that street ice cream. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Um so